Johnny Dollar. Hi, Johnny. This is Bob Baker at Surety Mutual Insurance Limited. Over there in dear old Boston, Mass? Yeah, that's right. How are you, Bake? It's been a long time. Yeah, I know. What's on your mind? And I hope it's something that'll earn me a nice fat commission. Well, as a matter of fact, there's a chance you uh, just might clean up on this one. Oh? You ever hear of the Ivy Emerald? Nope. Well, you should have. Happens to be one of the biggest chunks of that green stuff that was ever polished and put in a setting. Bake, the only green stuff I'm interested in. Yeah, I know, I know. The folding kind. That's right. Now, tell me, what's happened to this Ivy Emerald? Uh, What's your guess? And listen, Johnny. Yeah? Unless you can find out who stole it and get it back for us, and before it can be chopped up into little ones, I hope. How much? The insurance on it, I mean. $625,000. Wahoo. Yeah. You, uh... Want to come over here and talk about it? I'm on the way. The CBS Radio Network brings you Mandel Kramer in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Surety Mutual Insurance Limited, Boston office. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Ivy Emerald matter. (laughs) Expense account item one is $6 cab fare to Bradley Field. Item two, 1090 plane fare. After landing at Logan International, item three is two and a quarter for a taxi into Bob Baker's office on Boylston Street. Sit down, Johnny. I'll tell you what I know. Okay, Bake, go ahead. Well, first of all, I'm surprised you weren't familiar with that Ivy Emerald. It was all over the magazine, the picture magazine, a couple of years ago. You know, when some big Middle Eastern potentate tried to pry it loose from our client. What's the name of the client, Bake? Mrs. Oscar B. Sterlingweight. Emily Sterlingweight, a rich old widow lady. Mm hmm. And why the name Ivy Emerald? Because of the mounting. It's a brooch of solid gold in the shape of a, well, a Boston Ivy. I see. Old Emily has a collection, mostly of diamonds worth literally millions. Hmm. Only the Emerald was taken, however. Taken from where, Bake? Her wall safe in her home, where she'd put it last night after wearing it to some charity ball. Mm-hmm. Was it a nitro job? No, no. It was opened in the usual, proper fashion, by means of a dial. And her diamond collection was also in that safe? No, only paste copies of some of the diamond stuff for casual wear. Ordinarily, she keeps her important jewelry in a bank vault. But having worn this piece the night before... I see. In other words, whoever took it either knew beforehand the diamonds were only paste or simply recognized them as such, and that's the reason he didn't bother with them. Right. Well, the chances are then he's an expert. Right. Who else knows the combination of the safe? Well, she's the only one. You sure of that? Well, she swears to it. If she were to die without telling it to somebody else, the only way to get in would be to blast. Apparently somebody has. Hmm? So she isn't the only one who knows the combination. Oh, yeah, I see what you mean. But she's absolutely certain she's never told it to anyone. A good stethoscope will pick up the sound of the tumblers dropping, Dick. Uh, no, no, this, this box has an oil dampen movement, the quietest type there is. Made especially for her by the Darlington Safe Company right here in Boston. Darlington? Well, maybe that's the answer. Oh, huh? How do you mean? Um, let me have her address, will you, Bake? Oh, sure. But what did you mean about maybe that's the answer? Do you know old man Darlington? No, never heard of him before, or his company. Yeah, well, I do know him. And if you think that Darlington, who personally codes all the boxes they put out, would be the only one with access to the records of the combinations that he sold, if you think that he could possibly... Bake, my boy. Let's wait and see. <laughs> Item four is the usual 50-buck deposit on a rental car. And a few minutes later, I was in the Beacon Hill section of town, a block or so north of Commonwealth Avenue. Mrs. Emily Sterlingway's home was one of the fine, old, beautifully kept mansions that dot that exclusive, expensive residential area. The front door was opened for me by a uniformed butler. Since uh, Bob had phoned to her that I'd be along, she was waiting for me in the mahogany panel library. Because it's in here that I have the wall safe, Mr. Dollar, cleverly hidden behind a movable panel. Um, 
May I see it, Mrs. Stillingworth? Of course you may. It's right over here. Do you see I uh, pressed against the molding here? Mm -hmm. And here? Mm -hmm. And the panel slides away. And here is the thing. Oh, that is well hidden. Mr. Darlington himself supervised the installation of it a long time ago when he and I were quite young and he was, uh, was calling on me. Oh? But then, of course, I married Oscar. I see. Yes, Harry Darlington, dear, dear boy, was one of my most faithful admirers. Now, uh, the size of the dial here on the safe. Well, that's uh, because of my eyes. You have very attractive eyes, Mrs. Tillingway. Well, thank you, Mr. Darling. You're very sweet. They've always been one of my better points, even as a young girl. The only trouble is I don't see very well. I never have. And that's, uh, well, that's why Harry, bless his understanding heart, made the dial so large for me. I don't usually tell that to people, though. <laughs> I'll never mention it to a soul. Oh, thank you. Now, who else knows about the safe in here? Since Oscar died, no one but myself and, of course, Hendrix. Hendrix? The butler. The butler? Hmm? But good heavens, Mr. Darling, you couldn't suspect him. Couldn't I? Well, you saw him. Yes, and I must admit that he doesn't look the type. What's more, he's been with me ever since I was, uh, well, uh, for nearly 40 years. Um, does he know the combination of it? No, no one does but me. Well, yet somehow, somebody... Uh, Mrs. Tillingway. Yes? Have any servants left you recently? Only a chauffeur. Oh, when? Oh, about a month ago. That was Arnold. Arnold Bixby, I believe. Why? Hmm. Well, this may be shooting in the dark, but do you by any chance have a picture of him? Why, yes, I, yes, I do have. The one that little Evelyn, my niece, took with the camera I gave her for Christmas. Should be right here in uh, this. Here it is. Good. Here, Mr. Dollar. Evelyn was quite taken with him. And he was such a very nice young... Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh. What is it, Mr. Dollar? I wonder. Yes? I don't recall that name. Arnold Bixby? Of course, it may have been a phony. A phony? But I'm sure I've run across this man somewhere in the course of one of my investigations. Oh, no, Really? But he was so nice. And Mr. Dollar. Yes. How could he possibly have learned the combination of the safe? Would you like me to show you, Mrs. Stillingworth? Would you like me to open it for you? You? You think you can? I think I can. But how? Harry Darlington absolutely guaranteed that no safe cracker could do it by listening to the combination or anything like that. No doubt he did, Mrs. Stillingworth. Now look. Yes? I'm going to leave the room. While I'm out, with those big double doors closed behind me, you open the safe. Will you do that, please? Very well, if you like. All right, then. I'll leave you alone. But uh, if the combination can't be heard, even with delicate instruments... As soon as I've closed this door, you go ahead. Now. I waited outside the door, then, for perhaps a minute, maybe less than a minute. Then... Mr. Dollar? It's open now, Mr. Dollar? Good. What? I said good. Oh. Now close it again and give the dial a couple of extra spins. Very well. There. It's closed and locked again. All right. And you really think you can open it now? I'm sure of it. Let's see now. Two right to 36. How did you know? Oh, this is a quiet one. Now, three left. Stop on 14. You're right. There we are. Now, one full turn past 14 to... Yes, there we are. Wide open. But I... I don't understand. This oversized dial and the big numbers on it. Even so. There's a crack between those doors nearly a quarter of an inch wide, and you stood away from this, Mrs. Sterling, wait a full arm's length. Because of my poor eyesight. I could have seen how you turned this dial from nearly twice that distance. I see. So that chauffeur, or anybody else in this house, could have learned the combination just as easily as I did. Arnold Bixby, you said. Yes, but now he's gone, and I don't know where. And if he is the one, Mr. Dollar... Well, it's only a guess. But it happened last night. And if he was smart enough to have done what you did, with all the aeroplanes and things these days, oh, dear, he could be far, far away. Or if he's real smart, he'll stick around long enough to have the emerald taken out of its mounting and broken up. That beautiful 
stone? Carefully done by an expert oh. would only do enough to destroy its identity without fracturing the main body of the gem. But gym. to break up that lovely, lovely... Mrs. Tillingland. Yes, ma'am. You have notified the police, haven't you? Yes, there's a fine, handsome young Sergeant Willoughby in charge. Good. And the first thing for me to do is... No. No, maybe I have a better idea. Let's see now. Three possibilities so far. As always, in a case of this kind, Mrs. Tillingwaite herself. Of course, there was nothing to indicate that she was the type to use a trick like that. Second, of course, was the ex-chauffeur whose picture was familiar to me, but only vaguely so. And from where? He might have to find out more about. And finally, there was Darlington. But then in the office of his little safe company, when I met Mrs. Stirlingwaite's dear, dear Harry Darlington, well, I'm afraid any suspicion of him promptly vanished into thin air. His honest distress couldn't possibly have been faked. Oh, just, just terrible, Mr. Dallas, just terrible. She always loved her jewels so much, you know, and especially the emerald. Oh. And to think that one of my own safes made with such loving care betrayed her, betrayed her trust in me, in spite of my devotion to her over all these years. Oh, dear, I, I fear that I shall never be able to face up to her again. Poor, dear, sweet little girl. I, I've let her down. She'll never forgive me. Now, uh, Mr. Darlington, uh, from uh, from what she told me about you and uh, and her feelings about you, I think she would like nothing better than to have you right there to comfort her. You, you really think so, Mr. Dollar? You think she'd be willing to see me again after after this? I do indeed. Why don't you call her up and see? Yes. Yes, I shall. But first... If I can be of some small comfort to Emily... But uh, first, Mr. Darlington, I uh, I want you to take a good look at this picture. Uh, yes? A picture of this chauffeur she had. This man? Emily's chauffeur? You know him? Well, he was employed here in my plant for a while, almost a year ago. His name was Roger Gove. Roger Gove. Mm -hmm. Then it would appear that Arnold Bixby was merely an alias. Uh, what, sir? Oh, uh, nothing. I'm sorry. Go on, please. Well, he was only a truck driver and a loader, but I... Well, I, I just didn't like him. I'm a splendid judge of character, you see. Oh, I'm sure you are. Yes. And when I found him here in my private office one day, when I'd stepped out for a minute... Uh, think... Wait just one moment. That safe, uh, there in the corner. Uh, yes, sir. Is that by any chance where you keep a record, uh, a record of combinations of other safes that you have built over the years? Yeah. Yes, yes, it is. Well, then that's where he got it. But uh, he could only have been in here a minute or so. For a man who knew what he was after, that could have been long enough. Thank you, Mr. Darlington. Thank you very much. But wait. Uh, yes? This safe was locked. When he was in here. You sure of that? I'm quite sure. Only quite sure. So maybe that's the way he found out. Maybe it was the same way I did. At any rate, I think he's our man. Well, now, Mr. Dollar... I'll see I... you later. As for what happened next, the way things just kind of fell into place, well, you can call it coincidence if you like, but it wasn't. No, it was simply a matter of knowing which way to turn. In this case, it was to an old friend, an ex-convict, an ex-crook who knows more about the ways, the methods, the denizens of the underworld than anybody I've ever run across, simply because he was a part of that underworld at one time. Item five, ten cents for a phone call to Smokey Sullivan. Yeah? Smokey? Yeah? This is Johnny Dollar. Oh, Johnny. How are you, Johnny? I'm fine, Smokey, just fine. Tell me, um, you still an undercover man for the Boston Fire Department? Yeah. You know something, Johnny? What? Since they've been letting me help them out, they got practically no more set fires around here. Oh, <laughs> good boy. Listen, Smokey. No, Johnny, you listen. Hmm? 
I've been trying to get you on the phone all day. I've been trying. Oh? Well, I'm right here in Boston. You mean uh, on account of the emerald? Yes. The Ivy Emerald. Yeah, well, that's why I've been trying to call you. Well, that's great, Smokey. I knew this hunch of mine would pay off. Yeah, I knew they'd get you in on it on account of the insurance. You know where it is? Uh, no, Johnny. But you know who took it? No. No? Well, well, then what about it, Smokey? Well, maybe I got a good lead for you. Sit tight, Smokey. I'll be right over. You know, sometimes late at night when business gets slack here in the diner and I'm listening to the radio, I think to myself, I mean, suppose that Newport dame should walk in right now sit down at the counter and say, Heine, from now on I want you to smoke Newport filter cigarettes. You know they have the soothing coolness of menthol, the hint of mint and wonderful rich tobacco. It's that exclusive pleasant smoking combination that makes Newport more refreshing to begin with, more refreshing all the way. Will you do this for me, Heine? <laughs> Lady, I'd say, take the place. The whole joint, the steam table, the coffee maker, it's all yours. I'm a Newport smoker forever. Okay now, Smokey, you think you have a lead on the Ivy Emerald? Yeah. Well? Well, Johnny, about five blocks from here. There's a man who lives that used to be a fence back in Chicago. Uh-huh. Yeah, his name is Bildo. Fritz Bildo. He handled hot jewelry, hmm? Yeah, and he was also a diamond cutter, also. A gem cutter, hmm? Yeah. And has he been fencing stuff around here? Uh, no, Johnny. I don't know what he lives on. Well, probably just waiting for a killing on something like this emerald. Yeah, all I know is... He sits in a little shop in the back of his place making cheap jewels for the neighborhood kids. Just keeping his hand in, maybe, huh, Smokey? Yeah. Now, wait a minute. Look here, Smokey. Is this the man? Oh, no, Johnny. You don't... You don't know who that is? Who is it, Smokey? It's Manny Breed. Breed? Don't you know? And Manny's the best jewel heist this side of the state client. Then it's no wonder he'd go for the Ivy Emerald. And of course, it all ties up his job with the safe company under one name, his acting as chauffeur to Mr. Sterling Wade under another, and with this bildo here to break it up for him. Sure. You think Manny took it, Johnny? Well, don't you, Smokey? Where is he? Well, I didn't even know he was here. All right, then. Our job is to find him. Tell me, what do you know about this gem cutter, this bildo? Oh, well, you see... It was on account of the pile of trash around Bildo's place that I started watching him. Pile of trash? Yeah, the way I seen it piled up before when somebody's maybe figuring to have an accidental fire to collect the insurance. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go on. Well, I, when I found out who it was for its Bildo... Yes? Go on. So last night, I phoned my contact on the arson squad. That's Tommy Winkler. Oh, sure. I know Lieutenant Winkler. I know him very well. Go ahead, Smokey. So I told Tommy Winkler to better check up on Bildo. All right, so you told Lieutenant Winkler. What about the emerald? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah well, about um, 3 a.m. this morning, I took another look at Bildo's place, and the car he had a light on. And there he was in his shop at the back. Yeah. But when he seen me looking in the window, he kind of quick shoved something in the corner. The emerald? And he quick turned off the light. Smokey. And he, and he, and he pulled down the shade so I or nobody else could see Smokey, it again. Smokey, what did you see? Was it the emerald? No, Johnny. Well, what was it then? It was just a big gold setting. Like a brooch, like a leaf, uh, an ivy leaf. That ties it then, Smokey. Manny Breed took the stone to him to break it up. And if Bildo still has it there, come on, Smokey, let's go. Yeah. It was after dark now. The place where Bildo lived 
was on little more than a dark alley. The shade on the back room that he used for a shop was tightly drawn, but there was a light inside. Charlie? Yeah? You think maybe Manny is in there with him? I don't know, Smokey. But we'll take no chances. When I kick the door open... Don't bother, yeah. boys. What? And I'll reach for any gun because I got this. Manny Brent. That's right. Or is it Arnold Bixby? Or maybe Roger Gold? I'll take your choice, Dollar. You are Johnny Dollar, aren't you? Sure, if you like. And you, buddy. Too bad that Bill don't recognize you when you shoved your ugly puss at his window. That's what tipped me off to be ready for anything. Well, Dollar, this is going to be your last case. Is it, Manny? Yeah, yeah, sure is. Come on, pal, open up. It's me, Manny. What's this? All right, come on. Get inside, both of you. Come on. Manny, what is this? Well, you see, pal, you were right about it being Smokey Sullivan you saw. Yeah, yeah. And that stone there on the work table, Manny? <laughs> well, what do you think? It's this one. Who is he? Well, pal, this is the great Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar? Yeah. But he uh, won't be for long. Take his gun away. Yeah, yeah, I will. Yeah. All right, let me have it. That's good. Now, you see, Dollar, it's going to be your gun that kills you two. Just as soon as Fritzy shuts that door. Go on, pal, shut it. Yeah, yeah, I close it. All right. Nobody move. What the? It's Tommy. Tommy Winkler. Watch him, Tommy. <laughs> Like the U.S. Marines, Tommy. Thanks. Pleasure, pleasure, Johnny. Yes, thanks. But, Smokey, you know, you're a dog. I thought you said to come here just to look for a possible arson setup. Oh, yeah, well, well, Instead, I walk in on a... <laughs> well, what's this? Here on this work table. That's it, Tommy. The Ivy Emerald. Kind of made your trip over here worthwhile, didn't it? Emerald's back. And all's right with the world. Just one thing, though. My, uh, my commission on this one is to be split three ways. A third to Smokey, and a third uh, for Tommy Winkler. As for the expense account, well, if you pay that commission promptly, you can forget it. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Start to tell you about next week's story. Next week, proof the hard way of how wrong one can sometimes be. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar was written by Jack Johnstone, produced and directed by Bruno Zarato Jr. Music supervision by Ethel Huber. Johnny Dollar is played by Mandel Kramer. Also featured in the cast were Abby Lewis as Emily Sterling Waite, Lawson Zerby as Harry Darlington, Joseph Julian as Smokey Sullivan, William Griffiths as Bob Baker, Jack Grimes as Manny Breed, Sam Gray as Fritz Bildo, and William Mason as Lieutenant Tommy Winkler. Be sure to join us next week, same time, same station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Lawrence when he speaks. Songs are sweeter and swingier on the Richard Hayes Show weeknights on the CBS Radio Network. And on WDNC, AM and FM.